This lesson will be touching on Chapter 18, Incomplete Records, otherwise known as Single Entry Recording. Now, the first question I would like to pose you is, do you really think that all companies observe double entry recording? Also, what happens if there is a fire? When records are burnt? What if there's a flood? Records are destroyed. Now, to illustrate a point, a couple of years back, I did this comic strip on one of the students, Boaz. Here is the story anyway. Boaz Bomani. An excited Mr. Boaz Bomani, boasting about his new startup. He says, Finally, I can set up my own business. Hopefully, I can make a profit by the end of this year. So every day, he does nothing but chasing money. He hires no one to do accounting because he thinks it's a waste of money. And if you know this song by Ebba, it goes, Money, 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 come and find me in a rich man's world. And he thinks he is Superman. He can handle all things by himself. Now soon, his accounts started piling up and he is losing track of his accounts. Then it was time to file his income tax. Lo and behold, he doesn't have a lot of figures to draw up his profit and loss statements. I should have known better, silly me. Super zombified now, rushing day and night to source for all possible documents. Because at the end of the day, you still need to report to the government. You need your profit figure. Now what did he not observe? As you would have observed by now, he didn't observe the double entry rules. Now, so what happens in cases as such? Now, if you heard what I said earlier, there is still a need to ascertain your net profit because you need to account to your stakeholders. And also, besides the net profit, you need to know the financial position of your business. Okay, and that is really your balance sheet. So what do we do now? Introducing this chapter, Incomplete Records. There are two methods okay, to ident- uh, to, for, this, for this purpose. The first being capital comparison method. And the second, analysis of records methods. Whichever method you use really depends on the information given. And you can only use one of the methods in a question. You can't, it it can't be a question that you can use both methods. It's just pertaining to that question, there is only one method. So I will want to talk about capital comparison method first. Think balance sheet when you think about capital comparison method. And to be more specific, I like you to think the owner's equity section of the balance sheet. Let me refresh you with a balance sheet, an extract of a balance sheet. We mentioned earlier our objectives to find net profit and to ascertain the financial position of the business, which is your balance sheet. And you need to do this simply because you need to account to your stakeholders. Closing capital is equals to opening capital plus net profit, plus additional capital, less your drawings, as it is seen very clearly from your balance sheet. Now, what if you say we want to find? Net profit. Switch them around. Simple math will tell you net profit equals to closing capital, plus drawings, less opening capital, less additional capital. So there are four key information needed to find net profit. And here are the four. But are they just going to give you closing capital, drawings, opening capital, additional capital, just the figures and get you to find net profit? I really doubt so because that would be way too easy. So in order to increase the challenge, typically they will give you the assets and the liabilities at the end of the year, the assets and the liabilities at the start of the year, because you need to know, or you should know by now, that Capital is derived from taking assets minus liabilities. 
And to further increase the challenge, they will usually do something here to the closing capital by getting you to do adjustments to the assets and liabilities at the end of the year. Only the end of the year. Usually the start of the year is not touched. Only the end of the year. Okay, I would now like to illustrate uh, with an example. Okay, uh, just bear in mind, capital comparison method, you need four items, okay? Namely, closing capital, drawings, opening capital, as well as additional capital. So keep these four things in mind. As we look at this question, we want to pick out these four items, okay? Here we go. Yen started a transport service business on 1st January 2010 with a bank balance of 5000 delivery van value at 40k, furniture at 3k, and a loan of 1000 Okay, if you look at this date, 1st January 2010, what does it tell you? Opening, right? Opening capital. So, obviously, these assets and liabilities, take assets minus liabilities, you should get opening capital. Now, this is by far the easiest uh, figure to find, all right, out of the four. Very, very straightforward. Now, let's move on to the next set of figures. On 31st December 2010, he supplied the following assets and liabilities. So, this whole chunk of assets and liabilities will help you to find what we call the closing capital because of the date, 31st December 2010. Okay, so this also should be quite clear cut, but actually not so because you would uh, remember what I said earlier that there might be some adjustments to closing capital. So this is usually one part that you, you need to make adjustments to. Okay, now let's take a look at the third paragraph. It says the bank statement showed that during the year he had withdrawn $2,000 for his own use. This is really, really simple. Okay, it's just drawings and you should know that. Now he, okay, the next line is a little bit um, interesting. So let's take it a little slower. Now he also banked into his business bank account a sum of 15000 when he disposed his personal Mercedes Benz. So he has a, personal Mercedes-Benz that he has sold in his own. Okay, it is his own. And he has um, decided to put the money into the business bank account. Alright, so he has sold his own car and decided to put the money into the business bank account. So what does that make it? Additional capital, right? So that's why we have this paragraph as drawings and additional capital. All right, so far I hope it's quite clear. So we're going to move on to the fourth paragraph, which is by far the, the most difficult paragraph of this whole question. Okay, because if you recall earlier, I said that there will be some information that will affect closing capital. But in this case, right, not only will it affect the closing capital, it will also affect the additional capital okay the additional capital let's take the the, the paragraph uh, let's take a look at the paragraph right now now yen also decided to write off a debt of six hundred dollars now you would know that if i want to write off a debt of six hundred dollars it will affect my debtors all right so i take one thousand five hundred dollars minus six hundred dollars that will be my remaining debtors because uh, this this particular debt cannot be collected anymore. Then the next question is, do we need to record bad debts? Now, in this case, bad debts, you know, it is an expense. And from the start of the lesson until now, I have not mentioned anything about expense. Basically, because we are not looking at expenses, okay? We are just looking at anything to do with assets, liabilities, because assets, liabilities will affect capital, and we only want four items like I kept mentioning. So expenses out, okay, of this question. Okay, so this is the part that actually uh, affects the closing capital and I have already uh, explained it at length. Now we're going to move on to the next part which is going to affect the additional capital. Okay, so what is it? Okay, because... The change, it says here, okay, maybe let's just read this part first. It says, this new delivery van was bought by Yen's private savings. Huh? So apparently, uh, Yen, the owner, okay, bought 
a new delivery van using her private savings. So isn't this additional capital? Okay, so this whole entire information is on additional capital. So now let's take a look at the details of the, the, this part. Okay, so the change in the value of the delivery van was due to depreciation of $1,000 charged during the year and to the purchase of new delivery van. Okay, let's break this down. The change in the value of the delivery van. What change are they talking about? See here, 40000 at the start of the year. But at the end of the year, it became 50000 How is that possible? Well, it can only be made possible if there is a purchase, right? So there is a purchase of new delivery van. However, is it just take 50 k minus 40 k Answer, no. Because why? There is a depreciation. Okay, there is a depreciation of $1,000. Why is there depreciation? As you know, delivery vans, they have wear and tear and so on. Okay, so we need to provide for depreciation and it's $1,000. So very simply, just take 40 k minus 1000 to get the net book value of the existing delivery vans. Then, use 50 k the ending figure, to minus the 39k it would have been, okay? And the answer should be 11k. So I am going to show you the workings over here. Cost of new delivery van is 50k minus 40k, uh, okay, so this is bracketed, 40k minus 1k. Alright, then you take, uh, this is 39k, so 50k minus 39k gives you 11,000. So 11,000 is actually the cost of the new delivery van. And why is this particular information important? Because this is funded by her this yen's private savings. And would that that would actually mean that this is additional capital. So you need to add on to this $15,000. All right? So now we're going to move on to see what is the requirement of this question. Okay, so what is required of this question basically? You need to calculate Yen's capital at the start and at the end, which I already showed you how, alright? Now, the statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 2010. Okay, so I'm going to show you later on how to open up a statement to show this profit or loss. And lastly, a statement of affairs showing the financial position of the business as at 31st December 2010. Now this uh, statement of affairs should look new to you, okay? But actually, you have been preparing this statement of affairs. Uh, what is it known as or what is it otherwise known as is really your balance sheet. Okay, so statement of affairs basically means balance sheet. Okay, so uh, let, let's take a look at the answers. Question 1A asks you for the capital at the beginning. So capital at the beginning, I've already mentioned earlier, it's quite simple. So just take bank plus delivery van, furniture and then minus the loan. Okay, so that's at the start, first gen. So you get 47k. Now, at the end of the year, um, I also noted that there is a bad debt of uh, $600, which you subtract from the debtors. And then the rest is just assets, less liabilities to get $73,500. Okay, so for part B, you are required to find the statement of profit or loss for the year ended. Now, if you recall earlier, my colourful bubbles, how to find that profit. Okay, four key things. We have closing capital plus drawings, less opening capital and less additional capital. And we're going to put this inside a statement. Okay, so we start with capital at the end. Closing capital is called. And then we add drawings. Okay, so we also got this figure. Then we less additional capital. If you recall, your additional capital is made up of two different uh, uh, additional capitals of 26k altogether 
And then you also less your opening capital, which is otherwise known as capital at the beginning, $47,000. And then you subtract from here and you would get a net profit of $2,500. $2, now that you have already found your profit, you have already completed objective one. So the next part is you are supposed to do the statement of affairs. Statement of affairs, like I mentioned earlier, is your balance sheet. So if you look at it, it's really nothing very difficult. You have done this many, many times. Put your assets in here and your liabilities in here, your new closing capital in here. All right, and you're done. Okay, so just uh, take particular attention, pay particular attention to your debtors. This is one adjustment that you have made earlier. It was a thousand five adjusted downwards because of the bad debts of six hundred, so you are left with nine hundred. And then also uh, another question that you may ask is, do I just show the closing capital? Can I show the whole entire owner's equity section, uh, which includes your opening capital, drawings, additional capital, net profit? And the answer is, uh, you don't have to, uh, because you have already done so in part B your profit and loss statement. Uh, but if you want to show the whole entire owner's equity section, that's fine too. Okay, but uh, you have the option of not showing it because uh, you have already done it in part B. So just write closing capital here and it's 3500 That is good enough. So you have uh, successfully done uh, and completed the two objectives, finding capital Sorry, I beg your pardon. Finding the profit as well as to come up with the statement of affairs or your balance sheet to determine the financial position of the business. Some common mistakes to these sort of questions. If you look at the boxed paragraph, it says, the bank statement showed that during the year, he had withdrawn $2,000 for his own use. Earlier on, I only mentioned that this will affect drawings. So the question that you might have in your head would be, do I need to subtract this $2,000 from the bank, $9,000? Because I have withdrawn, right? The answer is no. Okay, and I will tell you in a bit because it brings me to my next uh, part as well. He also banked into his business bank account a sum of 15000 when he dispose his personal Mercedes-Benz. So there's money coming in, right? So the question is, besides additional capital that I need to recognize, do I need to put this 15000 into the cash at bank account? Again, the answer is no. Okay, what is the basis that we say no? Now, i like you to think of this as, remember, this is incomplete records. So where would I have gotten this cash at bank figure? probably from the bank, the bank statement, right, that I receive. So because it is incomplete records, I would probably get the bank statement from the bank, you know, at the end of the month, and that's, this is my latest figure. Would you then now agree with me that since this is the latest figure, I would have already, you know, uh, the bank would have already done this part for me, taken out the $2,000, the bank would have already deposited the $15,000 for me and there I get my 9000 my latest figure. If I were to minus again the 2000 and add the 15000 again, then I would have double recorded. So I hope that clears the doubt that these sort of... Um, question okay this kind of uh, statements when it is made it is for the sole purpose of determining your drawings as well as your additional capital and it has nothing whatsoever to do with the bank so i hope you are clear with uh, compar capital comparison method because we are going to move on to the next method which is the analysis of records method thank you